Good morning, I hope you're having a nice day so far. Welcome to a sunny, beautiful Friday morning in Australia. It's a lovely day, it's a bit windy, so I hope it'll be okay. But I thought it would be a nice place to film this video. So if you're not feeling too good right now, I hope that you can leave this video feeling a bit more clear, positive, and go ahead with a plan. I'm gonna be splitting this topic into two different videos. This first one being um, three, the three main topics that I think are the most crucial to our overall health, well-being, and happiness. And then the second video covering quite a few smaller, but still as important and as uh, transformative aspects of our life as well. So I'll release that in a couple of weeks time. This video is gonna be a bit more casual. We're in the park. Um, I have my laptop here and my journal to kind of keep me on track a bit. If at any time in this video you would like, um, you have any thoughts or comments or questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below and I'll endeavor to get back to everyone um, that I can. So to begin, whether you do this right now, um, you do this after the video or you schedule a nice morning or afternoon in, the, in your near future, uh, I invite you to create a nice, comfortable space that you feel happy and safe in, whether that's coming outside with me or lighting a candle, curling up in a corner, um, being in your room, grabbing a nice drink, a snack. As we go, evaluate these different aspects of your life and see how you're going with them, how you feel, what resonates with you, um, you also don't have to really deeply think about all of these different topics that I'm going to cover in the span of these two videos, um, just what resonates with you, because I'm sure there are some things that you're doing well, that you're happy with, and there are other things that are more important for you to focus on. And that's the point of this video. I'm going to give you everything that I can, and you take from it what you need. So let's begin. To begin, we're going to start with sleep. And I want you to just ask yourself these questions. How much sleep do you get? Do you feel like you get enough? What time do you go to bed at night? What time do you wake up? And do you generally stick to a sleep schedule? Do you generally wake up at the same time, go to bed at the same time, etc.? Why sleep? I think we know that we at least have a rough idea that sleep is incredibly important to our energy levels, to how our body functions, to our moods. If you are wanting to learn more about the importance, the detrimental importance of sleep and you're interested in it, and even if sleep doesn't interest you, which is fair enough, um, this book will, it really piqued my interest at least, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. Um, absolutely changed, um, transformed, changed my entire perspective on sleep. I'm now quite obsessed with it um, in a good way. And I really do notice the difference a good one good night's sleep is, and then good night after good night after good night after good night. Um, it's incredible. So I know everyone has different sleep schedules and it depends on so many different factors, but Generally, I base uh, what, what resonates and what feels good to me is kind of that mentality of going to bed with the sun going down and waking up with the sun. Um, I do tend to follow this pretty well. So what I do is if I want to get eight hours, which I know that I need eight hours of sleep, um, I will look at what time I'm going to wake up, what time the sun kind of will rise and then count backwards eight or so hours about eight and a half hours so I can kind of be asleep at that eight hour mark. I read somewhere, I'm not sure where, but it makes sense to me um, that the most crucial hours that we can be asleep, um, that for us to be asleep during are 11 p.m. and 1 a.m., which again kind of makes sense with that idea of being asleep when the sun is set, uh, where the sun is um, asleep as well. So something that Matthew Walker says in that book is that you're not getting enough sleep if you need an alarm to wake up with. 
Um, and that is really daunting to me because I definitely need an alarm to wake up with, especially when I'm getting up with the sun. Um, but I have noticed that as I have tried to consciously get more sleep and get to bed earlier on a consistent basis, that I'm kind of dozing by the time that my alarm goes off. I'm aware, I'm awake, and I know that my alarm's gonna go off soon. I'm not like being ripped out of a really deep sleep every time my alarm goes off. So that, I think that's a positive step in the right direction. Um, but I think that we can all relate to that feeling of the alarm just blaring and us not being ready to get up. So if that's you, I would really consider just evaluating your sleep habits, your sleep schedule. Is there anything that you can do to um, remedy it and make it work more for you? Because I know sleep, I at least find it difficult to put myself to bed, and I always have, but there's nothing like waking up in the morning feeling well rested and then carrying that positive energy with you throughout the whole day. Similarly, there's nothing worse to waking up and just can't, like you can't wait to go back to sleep. That happens to me, that happened to me so often. It used to happen to me every day and it still happens like every now and then when I haven't been able to get to bed um, at a reasonable hour. But if only for like to start your day in such a good way and to have the energy and um, positive mood and you know, we have no idea what the days are gonna bring, but if we can, like I think if we can wake up after having, after having enough rest, we are setting ourselves up for the best possible way to fight whatever's gonna happen that day, to enjoy whatever happens that day, and to get the most out of whatever happens in that day. So yeah, I think my, my biggest recommendation would be to look inward and question yourself. Um, to start waking up at the same time and as well if you need to like if you look at your the time you wake up and then you count that eight eight and a half hours backwards and you're like oh my gosh I'm not tired by that time I would still really encourage you to go to bed and just lie there just rest even if your mind's kind of ticking over it's beneficial for your body to just be there resting as well like during the day how often do you get to just lie down even if you're not asleep so that for me is a really great way to just um, still get to bed at a reasonable time, even if I'm not gonna fall asleep straight away. And also taking that pressure off, oh my God, I need to be asleep now, otherwise I'm not gonna get my eight hours. If you, just, if you just have in your mind that it's okay, I'm just resting, it's okay to rest, this is still like a really wonderful needed thing and I'll fall asleep when I do, you'll relax, you'll fall asleep more quickly. Um, it's all positives and you're just working with yourself and working with your body. Okay, secondly, we have nutrition and food intake. So I don't believe in counting calories or um, seeing food as anything other than enjoyment and fuel. I know that not everyone has this same positive um, outlook on it, but I just want to kind of convey my thoughts on this topic so for everything that we do in life whether that's running around exercising like crazy working looking after kids learning um, or even just like yeah lying down resting our bodies are using energy so i see food as the one of the primary ways i can live the life the way that i want to and i can enjoy that life so if i if I don't eat enough, my mood is low. I'm irritable. I am feeling really down about myself. I have no energy, so I certainly do not feel like exercising. I have no creativity, inspiration, motivation. Um, I'm constantly thinking about food as well, which is so ironic. Um, Although I suppose it's not because your body's telling you, like that's another way your body's telling you that you need to eat. Whereas if I am properly fueled, my mind is not obsessed about food. I just go about my day as usual. I have the energy for all the things that I need and want to do. And I can, you know, that, that 
that extends from like exercising and working to just going out and seeing loved ones and spending time with people and just living my life. Food enables me to do this. I also, this is where the enjoyment side of food comes in, I also absolutely adore eating food. I look forward to my meals, even though I'm not like sitting down obsessing about my food. I am so excited for my breakfast each day. I have the same breakfast each day because I love it. I know how it makes me feel. I am excited for lunch to come. I'm so excited for dinners. I'm excited to go out over food and share food with people that I love and go to the markets and buy really good produce because I love handling good food and then knowing that, like making that connection between, wow, this food is, like these farmers grew this and now my body gets to be nourished off of it. I think like the whole thing for me, food is just an absolute blessing. Um, yeah. So in saying this, knowing that my body uses food as fuel, I'm, a, I'm very aware of the different types of food that I need to sustain my body. Um, I'm currently exercising quite a lot, um, about four hours a day, which I know is really above the average person. So take kind of like what I say about what I'm eating um, with a grain of salt and as always, um, see a professional for your specific needs. I, for example, will need um, a lot more protein than um, the average person would. So, um, I like to ensure that I have a good variety and balance, like different fruits and vegetables, as well as protein, carbs, and healthy fats in each meal as well. I don't obsess over it, but I am quite aware um, there are things that I can work on right now um, to better my diet, to better my um, athletic performance. Um, but simply being aware of it is um, a really healthy mindset, in my opinion, to have. So I'll get to some questions you can kind of ask yourself at the end of this section. But my unprofessional opinion is to have three solid meals throughout the day with maybe one to two snacks in between. And our food intake will vary day to day, week to week. Um, some days I personally feel a lot more hungry than others. Um, and some days I feel like I'm kind of, I have a really low appetite and I'm kind of eating because I know that I need to eat. Um, but say I've had, say yesterday, I didn't eat as much as I normally would. I notice it today and I'm more hungry and I do make an effort to get um, more food in until I'm simply satiated and not craving food anymore. And so I believe that within each week, overall, I'm eating a very similar average of ca calories um, per day. Um, yeah, and so it's my belief that if you eat large and balanced enough meals, you won't need to snack constantly, not that there's anything wrong with snacking, um, but I find it a lot more satisfying to, after each meal, be satiated, and then I can just continue on with my day, um, because food's, food's not on my mind, I'm not hungry, my mood's, my mood's good, energy's good, and I can just, yeah, continue on. So I kind of have breakfast, a little snack for morning tea, lunch, maybe a snack for afternoon tea, but normally my lunch is like big enough and then dinner and then maybe um, like some chocolate, some fruit um, after dinner if I'm still hungry. Probably just chocolate though. So I would encourage you to have a look at um, your mindset around food. And this might be really clear for you. Maybe you have struggled with this in the past. Maybe you still struggle with it. Maybe you're just a bit on the fence and you, you don't, you're not super aware of your relationship with food, which is, I think it's fine. I think like we don't want to overanalyze things. We don't want to like overcomplicate our relationship with food. Um, but if you, I think it's important to be aware of how we, how we see food. Um, and if you recognize straight away that, you know, food is fuel. Um, I eat when I'm hungry. I eat what I want. Um, 
and I feel good with the food that I eat, um, that's really good to know as well. But generally, again, my unprofessional, unsolicited advice, I would generally look at um, food as fuel to do everything that you want to do in the day and in your life overall. Um, and I always think that your body knows so much more than your mind ever will. So if your body's hungry, if it's telling you that you want food, then eat and eat until you're satiated. Um, I also think it's difficult because there's a lot of conflicting advice. There's a lot of conflicting information out there. My advice would be to seek out a professional that you trust um, and kind of don't stop until you find someone that you trust and that you resonate with. I think that we really need to use our intuition in these circumstances um, and also just trial and error, see what works for us find things that make sense to you. Um, like for me, I was really adverse to like really upping my protein intake for a while because I just heard that like it was a bit of a myth or that um, we were really over consuming protein, especially protein powders. Um, but now for me, training as much as I train, I need it. And I've noticed like I was getting burnt out at the end of every month. Um, until I went to someone that I really trusted and they said, you are getting about a third, a quarter of your protein, your daily protein intake, you need more. And I've been making a bit more of an effort for the past two or three weeks. And my God, it has significantly helped me. Um, and I wouldn't have done that if it wasn't someone that I trusted and that could also back it up with knowledge and scientific evidence um, and just facts. So yes, take what I say with my grain of salt, but basically in this video, I just want you to be aware of how you view food um, and question whether you like how you feel with your food. Um, and then I can't find it on here actually, but I feel like I needed to say this. Um, I think the most amazing place to get to with your food is being able to listen to your cravings and eat what you feel your body needs. Um, however, like it's kind of a process to get there, right? If we um, are just starting our journey um, here, we don't really want to be listening to all those cravings for chocolate and donuts and soft drinks and um, like takeaways and pizzas and stuff all the time because that's not going to help us um, use without without using food as fuel mindset because ultimately when we eat that stuff does do we feel good within our bodies not our minds do we feel good within our body do we feel like we can go and exercise do we feel motivated or creative or like we can sit down and smash out some work like, do we feel like we can really have an in-depth conversation with a loved one? Most likely not. So, my advice would be that 80% of your weekly food um, comes from fruits, vegetables, healthy fats, um, and like my, my recommendation is animal like meats. Um, but just some form of protein. Um, and then the other 20%, do as you please. Um, but yeah, I think that that is, um, it's just food is fuel and 80%, 20%, is a really good way to, I think, fuel your body in a sustainable way um, for life. Okay, moving on to exercise. So this is the third um, 
point in this video. The main three, sleep, nutrition, exercise. So there's a reason that those three are the ones that I wanted to cover in this video and only those three is that they are the fundamentals of health and therefore us feeling our best. So if we're going a bit astray or we're not quite aligned in any of those areas, not only do they impact each other significantly, um, but they, we just, we're, we're simply not going to be feeling our best. For example, if you're not getting enough sleep, your body is going to be low on energy and then your body is going to start craving more foods, whether that's simply higher quantities or higher calorically dense, generally um, unhealthier foods like maybe donuts or pizza because it needs that energy. And then you're not going to have enough energy to go and move your body that day and you're probably going to feel sluggish and not going to be as your body's not going to be as fueled as it could be from the food that you've eaten because you've been tired. It's kind of this vicious cycle, um, you know, and if you didn't exercise that day, it'll be harder to get to sleep that night, etc. So they're all really intertwined. Um, and they also have a significant impact on our mental health, as you either know from experience or I'm sure you can imagine. Um, so it's really important that we get those things right first. So exercise. It's my belief that we should be vigorously exercising three to four times per week and trying to move our bodies at least once a day in some form. It can be like a, it can be a slow, gentle walk. It could be a yoga flow. It could be stretching, but just something because our bodies were made to move. And I think when you get into a regular exercise routine, you realize how true that statement is and how like talk about intuition, like how you start craving for movement and you get excited for it because the endorphins that you get and how good you feel about yourself and your mood is lifted and we're made to move. I'm really passionate about this one. Um, exercise has a huge impact on our health and happiness. We know this. But until you find a way to exercise in a way that you really enjoy, you won't truly know within yourself what that feels like. So if you don't currently enjoy exercising, I would recommend trying lots of different activities. And I'm also a big fan of sports, especially with other people. Um, things that don't really feel like exercising. So things that you don't have to dread or drag yourself to. Um, and therefore it's gonna be a lot more sustainable um, and enjoyable as well. Like why spend time doing something that we really hate doing? Um, even if we know it's good for us, it's not gonna sustain us for that long, is it? So yeah, as I just said, this is ultimately the most sustainable way to exercise if you love it. Not only are you moving your body, which is really good for you, your body and your mind, but you're doing a service by participating. You're doing yourself a service by participating in it because you're doing something that you enjoy, that brings you joy. Endorphins. I feel, yeah, we've all heard that exercise releases endorphins throughout the body and the mind, further proving, I think, that we're made to move because it feels incredible after exercise, especially um, after working up a sweat. Exercise improves our mood and it improves our day overall. When you find a form of movement, movement that you love, you'll also feel more inclined to fuel your body properly. Again, everything is kind of intertwined because you are loving and appreciating all that your body can do um, and you'll want to give it what it needs, if that makes sense. Um, your sleep will improve because your body will be needing that time to rest and recover so you can do it again. Um, and so it, our bodies will make us feel tire, tired earlier and plunge us into a deeper, more rejuvenative sleep. Is that a word? Rejuvenative? I don't know. Um, so have a think. I would encourage you to have a think and write down any sports or activities, especially ones like in your vicinity that you might have access to, um, that you might like to try, whether this is something you did in your childhood that you'd like to do again, or something you've never tried before. 
Um, and if sport isn't really for you, I would think about how you'd like to exercise. Is that with a group? Is that alone? Is that inside, outside? Get an idea of kind of what would excite you. My battery's about to die. Um, I'll come back to this. Oh no, we're still good for a little bit. Okay. The last thing I want to say on this is that coupled with exercise, physical rest is really important as well. So when you're exercising, you are tearing micro muscle fibers, which are the feeling of DOMS, delayed um, onset muscle soreness. I think that's right. I never use that term. Um, or that like tired feeling of your muscles the day, a couple of days after you train. So these tears need time and opportunity to heal. If you find yourself sore or just physically fatigued, I would suggest like a light yoga flow or a gentle walk or just stretching um, on those kind of days off you have on the week. I think it's really important to still move your body um, because if we just sit in our soreness, we'll get tighter and stiffer and we're not letting the blood flow to those inflamed areas because the blood flow is gonna help that healing process. Again, listen to your body, it knows best, um, but it's really good to move when you're sore, so I definitely would encourage that. Okay, that wraps up part one of this video. I'm gonna film part two now. I hope that you have enjoyed this and that you have some little notes and things that you can implement um, into your life. I, I'm really passionate about this because I really think that these, it's these foundational things ultimately in our life that do make us happy, keep us healthy, keep us feeling positive and good. And when we get these fundamental things right, we're setting ourselves up for the best possible um, day and life that we can. And it really enables us to do those things that we really wanna do, whether that's career or hobbies or whatever. These fundamental things are vital. So. I hope that you will give yourself this opportunity to look inward and reevaluate, set yourself some mini goals um, to work on over the next few weeks. And then I'll check back in with you with part two, um, where I'd love to hear how you've gone with your sleep, nutrition and exercise. Um, and we'll pick it back up there. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate having you here and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.